Hello, my name is Leopoldo Armesto and in this presentation I will introduce you ESP processors. This is the outline of the presentation. First, I will introduce you about Expressive Systems is the company that have developed the ESP processors. Then I will focus on the main processors they have developed, the ESP8266 and the ESP32. I will talk about the pinout and some shields that you can use with them. And then finally I will explain you how to set up the Arduino IDE so you can use these processors. So the Espressive company developed uh, in uh, 2014 the ESP8266 processor. It was basically uh, created uh, for or as a serial interface and it was based on AT commands. Uh, it became very popular uh, for the makers community so they could extend the Arduino Uno basically or mostly uh, so they could extend it and provide them with a Wi-Fi connectivity. So this is why this uh, processor became very popular also because of the price it was very very cheap and this, uh, this uh, was somehow a revolution within this, this kind of um, processors. In, um, in 2015 the, the company released the API so uh, then the community started or was able to program the ESP with their own firmware. So this uh, make that or this, this as a result of this uh, a group of people develop uh, a firmware which is uh, an interpreter for uh, in Lua so they you could program uh, the ESP processor and um, this and they created their own board and this was uh, known as the Node MCU. Uh, then um, there were a set of tools that they, they were developed and um, uh, particularly the ESP tool which is a tool that allows you to program this processor with the Arduino environment, the IDE. All these tools are maintained by the community and they are published in GitHub. Then uh, in 2000, at the end of the 2015 uh, the ESP32 processor um, uh, was released and it was uh, developed uh, mainly to overcome some of the limitations of the previous processor. It's much faster, it has two cores and more RAM memory and also includes some uh, Griffey encryption and um, it, this extends somehow the possibility to, to be used for industrial and commercial uses. Uh, in this case the company, the Expressive company, the, uh, developed the, uh, the API so you can uh, program it in Arduino IDI2. So one of the first processors uh, that was released it was the ESP01. It's a very tiny module, it was very cheap and this was the module that was uh, intended to be uh, as a serial interface so you can extend the Wi-Fi uh, capabilities of the Arduino. Uh, you can uh, provide or communicate with this board with 80 commands. There's a special set of commands that they were created for modems. And, uh, and with this board you can, for instance, uh, create a web server or remotely control a, a device. You can upload your own firmware but it's a complex procedure and it requires a special programming tool like you see here. Then uh, the Node MCU, uh, as I said before, was released or developed by the group of people and in this case uh, they, they used an ESP12 processor. In, uh, in the first generation of this board and then there came the, the second generation which used uh, the ESP12e version, it's an improved version. And then actually there's no officially third generation but uh, a company called Lolin, which is closely related with Wemos, uh, developed a different board which is widely used uh, nowadays. Um, also we have an uh, alternative to the Node MCU and we have, for instance, as you can see here, the Wemos DR2 or other different kind of uh, varieties using all of them the same, the same processor. So they basically provide the same features. So here we have a, a comparison table between the processor that uses the, uh, the Node MCU, which is the ESP32 
8266, it's the base for the, for the previous one I was describing, and the processor, the ESP32, that was released, as I said before, at the end of uh, 2015. So, the ESP processor 32 has Bluetooth, which is not the case for the, uh, for the previous version, and also has a faster clock and more GPIO inputs, uh, more PWM channels, more analog uh, uh, converters, but specifically they, are with, they have more resolution and they have more in integrated hardware itself. So they have SPIs, I2C, UARTs, but also they have other features like CAN, Ethernet, touch sensors, temperature, hall effects, and so on. So it's much more interesting to work with, uh, obviously, with this uh, processor. It's a slightly high, uh, the cost is a slightly higher, but uh, it's worth it too. So this is the pinout of the Node MCU. I show this uh, slide because there's uh, uh, sometimes uh, there's a difficulty to identify the pins corresponding to the Node MCU and the pins for the processor itself, which is the ESP8266. So the ESP uh, processor has uh, a different naming uh, 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 for the for the pins. So it's the GPIO from zero. 1, 2, and so on. But the Node MCU uses the standard or the conventional uh, naming that was used for the Arduino. D0, D1, D2, and so on. So, and they don't, do not correspond directly. Okay, so you have to watch out. Also, for the Wemos D1R32, this is um, uh, a processor, uh, a board which is based on the processor ESP32. Uh, it has a special pinout naming. So, in the board you will see uh, the naming like IO26, IO25, and so on. And this board, particularly, has the same shape as the Arduino, as you can see here, and if you, you can use, you can use um, Arduino shields on it. So, means that if you're going to use these shields, then maybe it's worth it to know that there has a correspondence, these pins, with, uh, with the Arduino, as you see here in the table. Also, if you're thinking about uh, using Node MCU, you might be interested not just using the, the chip itself, but maybe to use a shield, so you have an extension capabilities to connect more things uh, and more pins in, a, in order to connect things. So, specifically, you, you can use this board, and this board has uh, some power pins that I show you here. So, all these pins correspond to either 3.3 volts uh, voltage USB, USB or, or, or the, the jack input, depending which of the pins. But you have a lot of ground pins, and you have all the digital pins here, and then you have the analog pin too. So, the advantage of this shield is that it allows you to have a lot of specifically ground and power pins, and a lot of uh, digital uh, pins, so you can connect things too. For instance, if we, if we want to use the Wemos D1R2, it's based on the ESP8266 and it has the, the shape of the Arduino 2, and then we can use, for instance, this uh, Arduino sensor shield I'm showing you here in the picture. The advantage, again, is that we have a lot of pins for power, for ground, and for a signal. Okay, the digital ones and the analog pin. In this case, because the processor only has one analog pin, we are only using this pin here. And if we are using the Wemos D1 R32, then again we can use the Arduino sensor shield, because it's compatible with the Arduino, and again we have the power, the ground, the digital pins, and we have the analog pins. So, uh, in order to set up these uh, processors in Arduino uh, IDE, we need first to configure the preferences so we have to include additional board manager URLs, as it's indicated in the red box, and there you have the URLs that you have to put. Then, in the tools menu, you have to access to the boards manager and select and search for ESP32 and ESP8266, and you have to install those boards, okay? And finally, once you have the boards installed, then you have to select the Wemos Lolin32 whenever you want to program the, the, the Wemos uh, D1R32 uh, or the Node MCU 1.0, uh, 
if you want to program the Node MCU. Ok, so as a summary, in this presentation I have introduced you to ESP processors. Thank you very much.